Okay, hello world. This is Brenda again um, in the Chronicles of a Lost Girl um, or Aspie Girl. And um, this today I want, or in this one I'm actually going to do probably a few um, each day and um, upload them. Maybe I'll stagger them or maybe I'll upload them together. I'm not sure how that will play out yet. Um, but in this video, in this volume, I would like to talk a little bit about how what I'm finding, the reason why, especially girls my age, I'm 41, FYI, um, girls my age get diagnosed, um, like, are, it's hard to get, get them diagnosed, or even, like, where um, some of the guys get, will, are, are getting diagnosed much more often now, um, in or around my age, or even, like, a few years ago, and it's taking much longer to identify the girls, is because um, um, autism manifests slightly differently, and girls and a dozen guys for a couple of different reasons and um, I'm gonna get into that a little bit first before I get into what I my overarching theme which is um, a sense of identity for girls and um, so 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 th this is gonna be a little bit of both and um, and probably the next couple of volumes will be focused a little bit more on being on being a girl w with Asperger's I mean that will probably be a minor theme throughout all the volumes since I am a girl and I can only give things from a girl um, perspective except for maybe talking to some guys with Asperger's and reading some of the books and stuff like that and getting um, and also observing them and getting an idea of how it is for them <clears throat> but part of the reason for girls it's different is like at, like um, when you're a little girl like I think most Aspie girls um, identify as tom tomboys more when they're little and I think that's partly because my theory is that um you know for our hormones they're 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 not fluctuating like they do when we hit puberty where there are different levels of hormones flooding our system at any given time depending on our cycle but also in varying amounts especially compared to guys which is you know the main overriding overarching overriding t um, hormone is testosterone which is very is about action about direct being direct and everything like that and i think that us, and I'm not sure, and I don't think there's any studies on it, but this is a theory that I have is that maybe overall we um, had more testosterone like in utero or like as as little girls, and then um, and then potentially um, as adults we're more sensitive to testosterone. So when we have testosterone in our body, we're more impacted by it than probably other girls. But the, but I think part of the reason it manifests differently is we also have um, vastly more amounts of estrogen and um, oxytocin and I think whereas like when we're little girls it's more hard edges and more direct and it's more like a flowing river direct but when we hit puberty all of a sudden everything's in a state of flux and at any given time and I think that kind of softens some of the edges so where things were even if we think in patterns the way a guy does and 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 it's still not going to be the it maybe it is for some girls but for me I know in my specific instances, it becomes a little bit more organic and um, and adaptable. And I think also as girls, there's not only there's a greater expectation from society and from our families to socialize, as well as a feeling, a sense from ourselves that we need to socialize to survive. Um, but at the same time, because I think the way are 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 at being female more engineered um we're a little bit more susceptible to external influences which is frustrating <laughs> when you think about it um so whereas like guys behaviors become more overt because i think that they kind of rage against the world we kind of turn it inward and we rage against ourselves so even though we might have all these behaviors they become much more subtle much more um, pragmatic or, or less over or less um, um, noticeable in whatever way. Like for me, one of them was that I have, I've always slept with a teddy bear. Well, actually, I, the first thing I slept with was a blankie. And then when I got too old for that, my mom took it away from me. And I, um, I graduated to a teddy bear. Of course, my mom, like, I realized that I wasn't going to get the blankie back no matter what I did. And I, I knew I couldn't sleep without something to hug at night. So, um, and at the time is when I started getting into mythology and, um, I got my first teddy bear that I named and his name was Hermes. 
Um, and, you know, and then from there, like, things happened. Either my sister or brother deciding that I was getting too old for a teddy bear. Like, for Harmony's died because I hugged him too much. Um, and, and, and I'm going to get into for girls with pressure and, and hugging a little bit later. Um, but then I had Fuka, who, who, cause I was also into Celt Celtic mythology. So it was P H O U K A. Um, and my sister and brother actually tore him apart when they thought that I shouldn't have him anymore. Um, but the other thing that was weird for me as a child is I didn't like to be touched. And this is another, I think, common theme with people of either gender on the autism scale, because touch is very different from us, I think, than it is for other people. So when I was a little kid, my sister and brother liked to um, cuddle with my mom. My mom would be on the couch and she'd be like, Brenda, come up here and cuddle with us. And I'd be like, no, I'm all set down here. And it wasn't like, I remember my mom being upset a lot of times and thinking I didn't love her when I was little or getting confused by how I acted. And it wasn't, I, I loved her dearly. I loved everyone. I just didn't understand why we had to touch each other all the time to show this. I wanted to be able to just be by myself. And, um, or sometimes it wasn't even just the hugging, but I, I didn't want to have to join in the fa familial like activities because they didn't make sense to me all the time. Like if I was reading like, and they were watching a movie, um, I had to stop to come downstairs to watch with them. But then like I would get, once I started, like a lot of times I was good with it and everything, but it was hard for me and pulling myself away from that and then having to cuddle that it seemed like it was just way too much. Um, I rather, and I, I, I preferred being on the ground than I did on the couch because the couch felt way too soft for me a lot of times. And, um, and I know that my mom like did not understand this or like when we went to like, like, um, other events like Christmas, whatever, and the, the other family members were there and they tried kissing me, I would like wipe it off and it felt gross and weird to me. And I felt like it almost like stayed in that spot for hours afterwards. Um, and the other thing I used to have to do that my mom thought, and, and this is the pressure thing, and my mom used to always get confused, and I got confused, I was like, I don't know why, this is a, like, um, where I was always had to have a heavy, I always had to have multiple blankets, and they had to be heavy, and they had to, like, I, I couldn't have any gaps, I used to feel like if there were any gaps or holes, it felt weird, I had to completely cover my whole entire body, even in the summer, even if I was too hot, it didn't matter, I had to have that feeling of pressure all over my body, and now I'm finding that is another common theme, which I find very, um, interesting. Um, but the other thing, so going back to the whole thing of identity, and I, I kind of mentioned this in my introductory, um, in my introduction, um, video was the whole thing of like a lot of girls either identifying as tomboys when they're little or like, or like being a little bit more rough and tumble or whatever, but also like uh, maybe after puberty still feeling either maybe feeling half girl, half boy or identifying completely more with men or like maybe like me where I feel, or maybe not either of those things, but just not, but still, even if they don't feel more masculine inside or whatever, they still identify better with men than they do with females, you know, of the earthlings or Terrans, like our neurotypicals. Um, and like, and I, and I mentioned in my last video how on the outside, I feel, I like being feminine. It's hard for me sometimes. I remember when I was like up until probably a few years ago where I, I had to start, I, I I had to start doing certain things to get myself to, to, to remember to do certain things. One of them was to always comb the back of my head. Here, I can't see the back of my head. So to me, I guess it's just not, like, it's not that it's not significant, but I can't see it, so I don't know that it's not combed. I remember to make sure that the front of my hair is combed, but not the back of my, and if I was around my father, he'd be like, Brenda, why don't you never comb the back of your hair? And our people at work would say, like, <laughs> back your hair is always a mess. And um, it was very hard for me to remember to comb it. Um, because, and I think all, the other thing that would be confusing to people is, like, for the most part, I look very put together, but there would be, like, weird things that would happen where, like, I would forget, like, I'd have big deodorant stains on my clothing or things wouldn't be um, ironed or whatever. So it's like I would have this nice outfit, but it'd be all rumpled. And the people were like, what? It's like... Or even like the way I walked, like sometimes like I would walk into walls or I'd fall downstairs and I just seemed very clumsy, you know, um, <laughs> and we'll get in, I'll get into that more later. Um, so like when it comes to identity, I think a lot of girls say that they don't have a, like a sense of identity. And I think that I've been thinking about this a lot where I've read a lot of like blogs and a lot of books by women. A lot of people, this has been another, um, 
like common theme where like like girls saying they either don't have a sense of identity or they feel like chameleons or whatever and i think that a lot of times as especially the like aspie girls or girls on the autism or aliens or whatever um we we use you know like the the neuro the neurotypical or the the terran or earthling um um like filter to view ourselves and since we're more introspective and reflective um this begins to we begin to define ourselves by things that actually don't make sense to us and then that is where i think a loss of identity comes from i don't think that's true and i think because i kind of battled a little bit about with this but it was, i think the reason it was different for me i remember um so i'm not on work right now which i'll i'll get into another another um video the whole story of how that happened um and i thought that was i was I, they put me on disability on leave due to my bipolar but i'm starting to realize now that that um although I, like i said in my previous video I, I definitely do think i have bipolar one um i think the, act, the actual problems that we're having were actually due to my asperger's um and, and relating to people and socializing. Um, so the whole de identity thing is I was having, like towards the end of my job, I was having a very hard time with people. Like they would talk to me and I didn't know what to say back to them. And I, I was getting, having, becoming more and more anxious. I, I know like my job involved more and more um, dealing with meetings and running meetings. And, and um, if I had a fix to a problem where like management would be like, make it happen, go get people together. And I was like, I don't know how to manage people. I don't know how to make that happen. Get get people to do it. I want them to do. I don't know how do you do that. And um, it, it was very confusing to me. And I started to like lose faith in myself completely and think I was like, I was like, how is it? You know, I'm able to like, and, you know, I think that a lot of people say that they don't have gifts due to this. I think we all do, but I think when we start defining ourselves by terms that don't make sense to us, we lose sight of that. So we lose sight of what are our potential gifts and whatever form they might take, but also our, our identity because we start to try to identify ourselves through labels that don't make sense. Now, I don't think, because you, you hear a lot of people like um, Earthlings say they don't like labels. Um, and this is a whole different thing than that. And the reason is, is because I think that labels are important, but not for the same reason. Because I think sometimes you can't begin to understand something until you name it. You know, if you, when you give it a name, then you can, you, you can't categorize something and put it in a folder until you, you've named it. I think the problem arises is that a lot of earthlings, when they give something a label, then it becomes a box. It becomes a very specific tight box. And when they relegate something to that specific box, um, then it has to fit in that. And if it doesn't, then they kind of push it and smush it until it fits into that box. Or if they don't think it fits enough into that box and they dismiss it and they don't even, they don't even, they know that box doesn't apply. And it doesn't matter how, how much, you know, cause in their mind, like things have to eat, things have to have nice, neat little packages. And I, I think, and I, and I don't know, this is just from my perspective. I think we're much, we look at things a little bit differently where we're saying, things are overlap and they might fit in this category like i might have some like um more liberal views or, or democratic views but i also have some republican views and some independent and you can't tell like if you're in any of these groups they're like no you're more of this you're more of this and i try to like they can't even consider the the fact that there might be viable um like um viewpoints or, or points or whatever from in, in all factions and just the way they but like it's like once they shove something in a box it's like you have to it becomes like part of their identity that whole thing and i think that if we start defining ourselves through these boxes these labels that are very they're too stringent that are given to us by by earthlings then we're going to lose a sense of identity because we're not going to be able to fully identify with any of them or all of them, and there are will over identify with too many of them, and then we're like, oh, I don't know who we are. But I think if you strip all of that away, if you strip all for a second, especially you girls, because I don't think this happens as much with the boys, um, for a second, just strip all of that away, all those filters um, that you have been reflecting that that society or your social groups or, or work or 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 um, 
or like maybe mental health or whatever have have given you to reflect back onto yourself strip those away for a second okay don't think about them and be really honest with yourself look at yourself and i bet you're gonna know that you actually have a very very um distinct and significant identity and sense of self it's just not what other people would how other people define themselves and a couple of things like I think one of the ways earthlings like to define themselves is like things like their job, their credentials, um, like societal status. And I think that is, is something that is, I remember for the longest time, none of that made sense to me. Like I didn't want to go to college. I wanted to learn things because I want to learn. I remember getting to fights with my mom. Like what if I'm just like, like someone on the side of the street, like even because I, I go through different times where phases where I become really obsessed with different things, depending on what it is. Like I, and at this point, I was like, what if I'm just like someone who's just on the street and I don't have any money and I'm just and I'm just I just the way I survive is like writing poetry for people as I meet them. And my mom was like, that's don't why would you say that? Bah. And she'd get really upset with me. And even before, like I knew this, which <laughs> has been pretty much all my life until now, like I never understood why those things were important. Like the other thing, I, um, I actually have a blog. And again, before I knew this about myself, I wrote this whole thing about the freedom of forgiveness and why I thought having a winning, losing mindset was folly. Um, because I think that when you start doing that, I think it's folly for us, but I think for people or things, they can't even see the world as any other way. And I think it's also why my sister and I have struggled so much throughout our whole life is that from like day one, she was, in competition with me and I just wanted her to love me. I, I remember she was getting in so much trouble. She had to go to the, to, um, to private Catholic high school and she didn't want to go. And she came up to me with this whole argument. She's like, mom and dad said, I've been getting in too much trouble and I have to go to Coyle Cassidy and I don't want to go. And I told them that the only way I'll go is if you come with me. And she was about to launch, launch in this whole tirade. And I was like, of course I'll go, I'll go with you. And she was like, what? And she stopped. She's like, I had this whole argument. I'm like, I love you and I want you to be happy. So of course I'll go with you. And she was so surprised. And, but that was the whole thing. Like I remember, and, and I'll get into that whole, the whole triangle dynamic between me, my father and my sister, and or even my relationship with me, my mom and my sister, um, and another video. But, um, I think this is also why a lot of times girls get misdiagnosed is because we, we're a little bit more adaptable. So we might have a schedule for doing things, but if it gets messed up, we might have a meltdown, but we're more likely to hide it or um, or, or to feel guilty about it or whatever than I think our um, male counterparts or, or um, Aspie brethren are likely to do. Um, an example of this, and I, I never even used to tell anybody, I, I've told a few people about this, what used to happen to me at work or what I used to do is um, sometimes I would get so nervous or like I would, I would start freaking out I would get so overstimulated by the environment at work a lot of times I would go into the bathroom and I strip down naked I have to be completely naked I couldn't have anything touching me and I would just I would just rub my hands on my arms and I would tell myself it was going to be okay I'm um, actually it ha and this happens to me in social situations too where it's like it's not really appropriate to do that like I I um, went to meet some friends last summer at a at a bar and um and when I got there I didn't know I, I love music and a lot of times music is very, very calming for me, um, which is another thing I'll get into in a couple minutes. Um, and um, when I got there, there was no music playing in the bar and there's no AC and I'm very um, temperature sensitive. So if things get too hot, I literally overheat, but if it's too cold, I freeze. And it's always been frustrating to me. I always thought it meant I was weak and I hated that. I hated this about myself. And um, so I'm there and people are talking and I'm, I already have a hard enough time in social situations where I feel like everybody's speaking a secret language unless I have come fully prepared. But when the environment is now overstimulating me um, from all the people talking and I'm overheating and there's no music to listen to to calm me down, I start to melt down. And um, what I learned to do a long time ago, like I said, is I go into the bathroom. So here's the public place, it's a bar. And I go into the bathroom and I find a stall, luckily, and I strip down and I do it. And I realize that after a while I'm in there too long and they're probably getting weirded out. So I go out there and I'm sitting and I'm still espousing out and I can't handle it. So the next thing I like to do is I put my headphones on and I close my eyes and I start like swaying to the music and I shut off the world. And 
like, I I guess <laughs> this is not, and I've been told this before, and I never understood why it wasn't okay. Um, I was told, be, I, I, I was chastised by all of them telling I was being very antisocial and rude, and I should have gone outside, and I started crying <laughs> and breaking down. And, and the other thing I do, the most subtle thing I do, is I rub my hands together when I'm nervous, when I feel like I can't do the other two, or when things aren't that overstimulating. And I think, so girls, so it's less overt, so we don't, because we, we, we so much more want to fit fit in. I think a lot of times we'll do, our behaviors will be less overt or we'll try to hide them and we won't even tell anybody about them for a really long time because we just think we're freaks and weirdos. People already think we're weird enough or they or they think we're just enough weird and, and, and they can't fit us into any categories or whatever. So, um... Like I, like I said, I was doing that at work. Uh, I mean, I was, I've, I've been having that behavior and I, I wasn't, um, I, I, would, I would tell a select few people about it, but not everyone because I thought it was such a weird thing um, to do. And, um, and so once again, so I think the reason we sometimes don't have a sense of identity is because these things that we could really identify ourselves with are not the, the way society would identify us, or, if, or the things society would identify us, like the fact that we have weird behaviors, are are not things that we want to associate with ourselves, so we kind of dismiss them. But I think for a second, so once again, I'm going to go back to what I was saying before. If you're really honest with yourself and you look at yourself, I bet you can find a core identity of who you are. For me, I know when I was a little girl, it started... I always saw myself as a girl warrior because I loved reading about like Boudicca or um, or like the Valkyrie or like Lady Samurai, which there weren't many, but they were still pretty fucking cool. Um, or like Red Sonja, loved reading Red Sonja in the movie Red Sonja and um, and like all these girls are like Wonder Woman, like in her story, which I, I'll get I'll get into another time. Um, all these like princess warriors or Xena or, or warrior princesses or whatever and that if even though I at the time like I, I I wasn't fighting with like a sword or any of that kind of stuff I still identified as who I was I was always like overcoming these things and I saw myself as that and I feel like that you if you see yourself as this kind of thing then it is that part of you but the other thing that I've had problems with though is certain things that I see myself are a kind of are, they are seem like they're more fluid or chameleon like and the fact that like okay I never used to paint and all of a sudden I had a few stints in a psych ward and all of a sudden I started painting and now I love painting and so I'm not an artist in the in the traditional sense of the world where I have any formal training or whatever. It was also hard meeting other artists because they start asking you all these questions about about art and like about how like you do it or whatever and it doesn't fit into their mold of what they see as an, how an artist is supposed to be and you can see them kind of dismissing you um and so you're like am I really an artist I'm not an artist like sometimes I'm an artist maybe I only paint sometimes and maybe I can only paint when I have a surge of energy or, or a burst of creativity um the other thing might be like I have certain passages of uh, um passions obsessions but they only happen in bursts I know that happens to me where I go through phases where I'm really obsessed with something but it only lasts for as long as that obsession lasts until the next thing catches my eyes and I become fully in, um, immersed and obsessed with that. Now I have like certain obsessions that run all the way through, like my love of sci-fi, fantasy, comic books, um, comic book movies, um, things like that. That's always like a common running theme. But then there will be all these side obsessions that I'll um, get into that are new and um, and I'll try to, you know, like my, my one for a while for a few years was um, brain research before I even found out about this I just knew my brain was different than other people and I was fascinated by it and I was fascinated by how like how the gender-based brains and how men and women differ especially like in mental illness like how hypersexuality like in bipolar disorder happens more often in women um, or in and, and, and other things and how like a lot of times girls will more often have borderline personality disorder than any type of a true psychosis or like so um, like a, be, being full sociopath like men and why that happens and like why how how like MRI scans show like empathy in the brain and how girls tend to be more empathetic or even like the reason the guy Charles Moulin um, Marston how he wrote Wonder Woman because he invented the lie detector machine and he felt he was championing women's cause and he felt women were on average more honest than men like all these things were very fascinating to me um but also why I in my brain differed than most of the women that I knew um like why I didn't like chit chat why social um 
outings were so stressful for me, why I couldn't seem to talk about the things they wanted to talk about. Um, and like, I didn't identify like as a normal girl and I didn't identify as an artist. And then like for a while, like I worked in biotech uh, and, and like, like how I would get partial degrees and something, but like, it's not that I wouldn't go and read up on everything and just like the patience to get a degree, to get all the other stuff that you have to do with it is, is not always, or you might have a hard time in class. Like I remember I was taking this class in, in college, like, um, an undergraduate, um, class and she asked what the rhetoric was and I, I like I, I don't know I lost all my words I didn't realize again this was like the whole involuntary mutism thing I feel like everybody's laughing at me and I ran out of class um, and that actually happened to me when I was trying to do my senior thesis in this quorum thing where someone started to ask me questions and it wasn't something that I prepared for and I, I just broke down I shut down and I went in the bathroom and I couldn't talk I was trying I was like Arr, and I like the words I was stumbling over myself and clutter the first I started out with the cluttering and then I lost all my words and then I um, ran in the bathroom and I and I vomited and I know a lot of people out there are probably like We've all been through things like that. And um, I'm not saying that other people haven't had their own trials and tribulations. I'm just saying that um, I think that, you know, especially for girls, our ability to communicate might be better than guys. But the thing is like, so, I, I, and um, let me back up for a second. So getting back to the whole identity thing. So I've been out of work now for a while and I don't realize like how much practicing socializing was integral to my survival as a social creature because like now I've been getting and one of the great things about being out of work is that I get to fully focus my time and all my obsessions so my brain stuff like I actually joined a bunch of brain research studies and I'm just reading everything on neuropsychology and all and other things too related things like on cults and like how on brainwashing and 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 like like how people are able to change things like like brain plasticity and, and uh, neuroplasticity and NLP and and all that kind of stuff and even like coercion and persuasion and like in the POW camps like during World War One and Two and like the different techniques they were using especially like in the Koreans and then the Chinese and the Japanese and how that that differed from like the the, the, the varying different ways of like torture and then um, coercion and and how um, persuasion and, and 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 mind think and how theory of mind and how group think and how which is I'm going to get into later which about like the whole societal collective mindset what I which is something that I had a theory on a while ago in independent thought versus that and especially cognitive dissonance I started reading up all all the stuff and became obsessed with it and it was awesome because I could kindly like totally focus on all my obsessions and um and um, I started my this website. Um, with some sometimes I have my paintings on there, my philosophies or my writings, and no one was there to tell me I was being weird or telling talking about things nobody cared about. And I completely forgot about all the things that I learned before. And every once in a while, I want to go and socialize. And that is when the problems really, really started um, arising, where I started offending people, especially girls, but even guys, and girls would be like, you know, hard to get along with, but even guys are having a hard time getting along, or, or people thinking that I had an agenda, which I think I'm going to get into in the next volume, is agendas. Um, people thinking I had intentions and motivations that I didn't have, and me not knowing why or how to fix it, and I, I feel like some of these texts that I have with some two recent friends, a male and a female, and I'm just going to state them really quickly and then I'm going to have to end this video because it's almost over, um, which I think will give you a good idea of what I'm trying to say. So uh, interaction between me and a female friend texting is I texted her is um, I had some, pro like I, I hadn't talked to her for a while and I never had, know how to start off text and I, and I wanted her, like I was looking at x-rays from like 2004 and I have scoliosis and it was kind of fascinating to me. So I sent her a picture of my, <laughs> my x-ray and I said, you know, like I, sometimes I think this is where my bipolar, all my weirdness like stems from is like, you know, maybe I'm out of balance because of my scoliosis or whatever. And I hear, I don't hear back from her. And then, um, so like then I I text her again and um and I ask her if she like doesn't basically doesn't like me anymore and she texts back she's like um Brenna, I don't I, I don't know what you what you want from me I haven't heard from you in a while and the first thing you do is you tell me all these weird health things you don't ask me how I'm doing or whatever and um so so the first the next text I say to her is like um I just figure if you want to tell me about yourself you will I'll tell you about myself 
but my mindset is of like you keep waiting for people to ask you questions and you're never going to get a chance to say anything to you. I don't understand chit chat. Just tell me what's going on in your life if you want me to know. And she doesn't answer me. So then I text her again and I say, um, apologies, like, how are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. And, and then she texts back. She's like, I'm doing well. I just came back from vacation, starting work again, blah, blah, blah. And, um, okay, you know, I, I'm actually going to finish this because I, cause sometimes I know that videos on hair will end after 30 minutes and I don't want to. So, like, I didn't get into the full thing of identity in this one, but I feel like, uh, uh, um, the identity and also agenda. So they're gonna over the next volume will kind of overlap a little bit where I'm finishing what I'm talking about with identity in this one and then into agenda. Um, <laughs> apologies if I'm talking too quickly or if I'm cluttering at all. Um, and I hope you guys are somewhat enjoying these crazy videos. All right, peace out. Bye.